Hello, everyone. My guest today is Justin Duke. He works at Stripe, making it easier for companies of all sizes to understand and improve their core operations. Before that, he was the first technical hire at a commercial real estate startup and an engineer at Amazon, making it more fun for you to read books on your Kindle. He created Button Down, which is the best tool in the world for starting and running your newsletter. Also created Spoonbill, a social media metadata platform. Justin, you ready to take us to the top? Absolutely. So just to be clear right now, is button down email a side project and you're full time at Stripe currently? Is that how that works? Yep, exactly. I see. Okay, give us just tease us a little bit on the Stripe side. What are you working on at Stripe if you can share? For sure. I work on data analysis and reporting products. If you're a really big merchant, um, you can't just page through Stripe's API to get all of the data you need to like load into a data warehouse or figure out your MRR or approve stuff like that. I work on tools that make it easy for our biggest merchants to do that really quickly. God, how, how, what a great reflection you are on Stripe. The fact that they let someone like you doing that spin up side projects, have fun, put the projects on the market. Hopefully you use Stripe for your own billing <laughs> on button down email. What, what a fun company to work for. For sure. Yeah, it's been one of the really fun parts of dog fooding Stripe. Uh, button down is built on top of Stripe and being able to file sort of bug reports and paper cut reports to the actual teams whose products I'm using is a really cool feedback loop. That's super cool. All right. So let's focus on button down. What's the company do and what's your revenue model? How do you make money? For sure. Button down in terms of revenue is a traditional SaaS. Uh, we have two tiers. One is sort of a premium feature tier and then metered billing, depending on how, e- how many emails you're sending out every month. Um, it is similar to, if you're familiar with MailChimp or Tiny Letter or Substack or Drip. Uh, at the core, you have an email list and you want to send out content to that email list. Maybe you want to segment by tag or by target user in a certain vertical. Bundown makes it really easy to do that. So, out of curiosity, if you add up, assuming your post revenue, if you add up your revenue over the past 30 days, what percent was metered based income versus flat fee SaaS fee revenue? Great question. It's around two thirds comes from that flat SaaS revenue. The flat revenue is sort of the paywall for some of the premium features like custom domains, advanced analytics, that sort of thing, whereas metered is purely based on volume. So only a third of button downs revenue comes from that just tax on top of the email you're sending to subscribers. Two thirds, the majority is coming from the premium feature set. Yeah. The reason I ask the question is I am curious over the next two, three, four, five years, as we see, uh, you know, continued maturation of software eating the world, you know, there's a lot of SaaS companies and actually you see this, I'm sure on Stripe, there's a lot of SaaS companies that have paying subscribers that don't use the tools at all. And the mm-hmm. founders go, oh my gosh, like, should I email them and like cancel them? But no, I don't want them to cancel because I like the revenue, but I need to reactivate them. What do I do? And then you have other people that says, you know what? We're not going to do a SaaS fee, but we know that they are addicted to our platform so much. We can drive predictable revenue based solely off usage metrics, a utility based metered fee. And I'm curious, like if, if I asked you, if you had to pick one of those very polarized here, if you had to pick one of those as the dominant billing kind of method five years from now in the software world, which would you pick? I think if I had to choose between the two purely usage based because it kind of leans into expansion revenue a bit more nicely of you're always going to have an upper bound if you do that conventional sort of like three column SaaS pricing grid of 29 a month, 99 a month, 199 a month. You're then kind of tying yourself to that maximum price unless you have a contact us thing. If you do something that's purely usage or metric based, um, you kind of open yourself up to grow your revenue and your ARPU per customer as they mature and as they continue to do well on the platform. So let me counter that real quick with what pricing experts might come at you with, which is Justin, yeah, I totally agree with you, but you never want to disincentivize usage of your product since it's tied directly to pricing. How would you respond to that? I think that's fair. I think one of the things I still need to resolve is the fact that uh, my unit costs are very similarly disincentivized, right? Of I pay a certain like fraction of a cent per email I send to AWS. So in a way, like I'm almost a little bit disincentivized for my customers to use the platform extensively. A a account that sends out one email a day is costing me 30 times more than an account that's sending out one email a month, even if I'm taking away a pretty similar margin from each one. So that's mm-hmm. something I, I still think I need to work on a little bit with the business model. But it's why I've found a bit of success with sort of the hybrid approach of you get that metered billing, but then you also get that flat margin on top of it. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's nice that you have both because you can kind of see how both pan out over time, which will be fun to watch. Give us some backstory here. What year did you launch the company? I launched it in around 2016. It was less of a company and more of a like very hackish MVP because I wanted to use it. 
And then as I put it online, I saw more and more people were interested. So I was like, okay, I need to add an off model. I need to figure out how to monetize this somehow. But the original 1.0 was in late 2016. And so when you're Googling around in 2016 for this product and you decide to build it because you can't find what you want, I mean, why wasn't MailChimp good enough? Why wasn't Substack good enough? Why, why weren't some of these you know, active campaign, why weren't they good enough? For sure. I was using a tool called Tiny Letter, which is owned by MailChimp. And it was one of those things of, it did a lot of stuff fine, but I'm an engineer at heart. And one of the worst things an engineer can say to themselves is, I bet I could build a better version of this in a weekend, <laughs> right? Um, because it was just like dumb stuff. Like it didn't support Markdown. Sometimes emails were getting dropped, like all of these little paper cut things that I was just like, I'm a user of this and I'm getting frustrated. Like, can I build something that just solves my own problem a little bit better? Um, and especially for some of the very marketing heavy tools like Active Campaign, like MailChimp, these are designed for folks who are sending out you know, e-commerce blasts to potentially tens of thousands of users. And that's a very important vertical to handle. There's also this entirely underserved market of people like me in 2016 who have a newsletter with maybe a couple thousand subscribers, like they're blogging, they don't have this grand strategy, they're not trying to track all, all of these things, they just want a really seamless, pleasant user experience. Mm -hmm. that, that makes sense. Now, help me understand when you add, <coughs> excuse me, Woo. coffee <laughs> went down the coffee went down <laughs> the wrong funnel. When you look at the average customer, and with the average customer is paying you per month, what does that come in at? Woo, I'm uh, good. I promise. <laughs> around 20 to 25 bucks a month. Okay, got it. So there's like, and the flat fee is like 15 ish, something like that. So the flat fee is 29 a month. So the average user is actually not on sort of that main premium tier. They're just getting the metered bill. Oh, interesting. So your freemium product really is metered only. And then they move into unlock these other features. Then they move into the flat base plus, plus metered. Exactly. Interesting. Okay. So 2016, you launch, it's, you're eating your own dog food. How'd you get your first, you know, five customers? For sure. Um, after a certain point, I started getting inbound emails where it was like, oh, this isn't just friends asking to use the tool. It are, it's people who saw it on Twitter, who saw it on Hacker News that want to use it, who have volume more than I was expecting. Let's hack some sort of pricing strategy together. So I have a cohesive thing to uh, offer them. And it was entirely inbound, which was really nice. I think one of the advantages of all of these soft launching tools, whether it's like Product Hunt or Beta List or all of those, is you get a lot of inbound interest pretty quickly, even if it is very spiky. Mm -hmm. um, so I was able to get, I think it was my first like dozen or so customers entirely inbound, people just emailing me saying, hey, I want to use this tool. How do I sign up? What do I have to pay? Was it, pro which, which of those platforms did you sort of launch on? Was Product Hunt a big deal for you? For sure. It was Product Hunt um, and then Hacker News as well were kind of the main two. Okay, okay, let's break down sort of both of those, right? So do you feel like Hacker News can sort of be, can you be strategic around it if someone wants to copy your strategy or is it really lightning in a bottle? I think it's more lightning in a bottle. It's There's been a, a plethora of people writing about like how to launch on all of these news platforms. And I do think a lot of it is very hit or miss. Like sometimes you win the lottery. One of the things that I've found continuously helpful though is just searching for comments and folks discussing the broad genre and sort of like dropping your name in a little bit. Obviously, you don't want to be spammy with it. But even after the initial launch, sort of the show HN post, if that doesn't work out so well, you can still be present in the community and have conversations and slowly offer folks. And I still see a large proportion of my traffic coming from, you know, comments that I've made months ago on Hacker News, as long as the content is relevant and the tool itself is put into the discussion. I was just, just going to say, when people tell me they use Hacker News to launch, I go on and look at their Hacker News posts and there's usually like one or two that they did really well a long time ago. And then they keep trying it for like years and they only get like one or two upvotes. I actually just went into your button down post on Hacker News. You've actually sort of done this multiple times, right? I mean, you posted a big one back in July 6, cryptocurrency, cryptograph, cryptography dispatches. Hello world. Was that actually one of your, your writers who posted? Yeah. They're right. Oh, got it. Interesting. And so that comes into the other feedback loop too of folks in that community who are using Bundown as a platform. When those posts go viral, I get a ton of inbound marketing there because it's all on the top level domain. And it's happened multiple times. I mean, I see multiple posts here where there are more than 50 upvotes. There's one here with 286, don't write documentation and mark down. There was one just last week or about a week and a half ago, syntax highlighting is a waste of an information channel. So this is a really nice feedback loop for you. I imagine you get a lot, I mean, thousands of signups from this. Totally. Interesting. Okay, what about product time? Lightning in a bottle or you can you can strategize? That was, I think you can strategize 
more in terms of the initial launch. Product Hunt is much more friendly in terms of letting people kind of glom on and being very sort of positive. Like the community there in general is nicer, but it's it's the opposite of a long tail, right? Like you're not going to be able to bring it up in a lot of discussions. I think the the, the state of discourse and like the actual people commenting on Product Hunt is much more less in volume. It's really just that first day, if you can kind of get in the top five, then you're going to get a great spike of content, but it'll drop off pretty dramatically thereafter. Yeah. July 10th, 2017, you got about 360 upvotes. Do you remember how many sort of clicks you saw to the site that day? I don't off the top of my head. I remember it was pretty substantial. Like even now when I look at my historic sign up graph, like that is a very prominent spike. Um, it was dramatic and it was very useful. Interesting. Okay. So how many customers are right now serving today? So right now around 250, 260 paying customers. That's great. So, I mean, can I take 250 times 20 bucks a month? You're doing, what is that? Five, six grand a month in revenue, something like that. Yep, exactly. That's great. Okay. So, um, I, and I assume obviously you're bootstrapping this as a side project or have you raised? No, completely bootstrapped. Yeah. Bootstrapped. That's very cool. And is it just you or multiple people? Just me. Uh, I get some friends to help me with copy editing and reviewing some up pull requests every now and then, but it's <laughs> it's me on the masthead. <laughs> That's the way to do it. And do you see sort of addictive behavior? What does your churn look like, and you know, monthly? And you could give it to me on a flat fee churn kind of basis or on a on a metered kind of churn basis. For sure, churn actually looks pretty similar on both, but people who are on purely the metered churn a little bit more. I think it's around like let's say eight percent. Uh, month over month churn. If you're just using the metered, you're not using any of the premium features. But I've found that the, the folks who are using the premium features, people who I'm getting more revenue from are actually stickier. It's closer to, I'd say like four or 5% churn. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it's really great. And are you doing anything in terms of like CAC or is it really all inbound, sort of the, the product-based marketing, the hacker news posts, things like that? It's pretty much all been inbound. I think around last year, I messed around with just sort of doing some AdWords stuff, seeing if that was going to be a useful channel. I was able to get like a bit of flow coming from those channels, but it wasn't playing to my strengths. I felt like I only have, especially bootstrapping as a side project, I only have so many hours in a day. I'd rather spend that time improving the product and doing blogging type things to do marketing as opposed to fiddling, fiddling around with like the search ad side of things. Mm -hmm. All right. Very good, Justin. Let's, uh, anything we missed before I wrap up with the famous five? I think that's it. All right, man. Here we go. Number one, what's your favorite business book? <sighs> Getting things done. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? Huh. I would go with passively, uh, besides my employers, the Carlson brothers are great and I learn a lot from them. Uh, Richard Allison, who is the CEO of Domino's, if you look at the Domino's stock over the past few years, they have changed from being a food company into a distribution company. It's really, really cool. Number three, what's your favorite online tool for building a button up or button down? And it can't be Stripe. <laughs> besides Stripe, Notion. Notion is my lifesaver my FAQ, my roadmap, my everything. Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? Seven or eight. Okay. And what's your situation? Married, single, kids? Living with my girlfriend of just under two years. Oh, congratulations. And how old are you? 27. 27. Last question. What do you wish you knew when you were 20? Get better at writing. Writing is a superpower. It helps you think better. It helps you communicate better. It helps you do everything better. Guys, there you have it. Button down email. He scratched his own itch in 2016, launched this company, which helps you write your newsletters more effectively, especially sort of these niche players. Uh, he's got customers paying about 20 bucks a month on average, 250 customers total to date. No paid uh, marketing. Most of his growth has come from our product at launch and Hacker News posts as he looks to scale over time. On the side, again, he's bootstrapped this on the side while running uh, full time at on and on the Stripe team. Justin, thank you for taking us to the top. Thanks so much, Nathan. Have a good one. One more thing before you go. We have a brand new show every Thursday at 1 p.m. Central. It's called Shark Tank for SaaS. We call it Deal or Bust. One founder comes on, three hungry buyers, they try and do a deal live and the founder shares back-end dashboards, their expenses, their revenue, ARPU, CAC, LTV, you name it, they share it. And the buyers try and make a deal live. It is fun to watch every Thursday, 1 p.m. Central. Additionally, remember these recorded founder interviews go live. We release them here on YouTube every day at 2 p.m. Central. To make sure you don't miss any of that, make sure you click the subscribe button below here on YouTube, the big red button, and then click the little bell notification to make sure you get notifications when we do go live. I wouldn't want you to miss breaking news in the SaaS world, whether it's an acquisition, a big fundraise, a big 
big sale, a big profitability statement, or something else. I don't want you to miss it. Additionally, if you want to take this conversation deeper and further, we have by far the largest private Slack community for B2B SaaS founders. You want to get in there. We've probably talked about your tool if you're running a company or your firm if you're investing. You can go in there and quickly search and see what people are saying. Sign up for that at nathanlacka.com forward slash slack. In the meantime, I'm hanging out with you here on YouTube. I'll be in the comments for the next 30 minutes. Feel free to let me know what you thought about this episode. And if you enjoyed it, click the thumbs up. We get a lot of haters that are mad at how aggressive I am on these shows, but I do it so that we can all learn. We have to counter those people. We got to push them away. Click the thumbs up below to counter them and know that I appreciate your guys' support. All right. I'll be in the comments. See ya.